by the Tet Offensive in 1968, an unexpected assault by North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces against 40 province capitals and uh, many military bases, including some American bases. Totally unexpected, contrary to what Westmoreland and General Westmoreland and others have said. Total surprise. And the impact of the reporting was a major influence on the American public. Now, the military says, well, those damn reporters ruined it for us because all those stories about the embassy and the Chalon being blown away, and my answer would be, if you hadn't allowed the Viet Cong and NVA into Saigon, you wouldn't have had all these stories. The thing was, the war came to the heart of the city. It came around the Caravelle Hotel, and a lot of those who sort of spent their time in Vietnam doing office work or stuff, suddenly they, were, they had to wear their combat jackets you know, and, and, and helmets, and it came right into the city. And uh, explosive information, literally explosive, and not only Saigon, across the country. And uh, Eddie Adams, of course, took his famous picture of the execution of, of by General Luan, the national police chief, of a alleged Viet Cong who turned out he was a Viet Cong, and uh, the claims have never been verified of what he'd been doing before that, but he had been a Viet Cong agent. And, but, of course, in arguing about the, the picture, the question is battlefield justice. Was that what America was all about in Vietnam? That picture caused a lot of questioning, uh, rightfully so, because that was not once in a lifetime execution in the battle in the street in the battlefield executions were common in this war by vietnamese against vietnamese this was one that was captured by one of the great photographers of our time remarkable picture remarkable courage to take that picture as this maniacal police chief pulled up his pistol pulled the trigger i would have been uh, on my way out of there you know, but Eddie got the picture. But the the what Eddie two days later went down to Vin, which is a village and a provincial capital along the Mekong River, came back and said the whole place is being blown apart. It doesn't exist anymore. What the hell happened there? Now you know it wasn't the VC. They don't have hill artillery and by they don't have the kind of equipment that could, you know, blow a concrete house apart. They had some rockets and AK-47, but they didn't lo carry through the jungle. Eventually, they did, <laughs> but at that point, they carried small arms, basically. And I was thinking, you know, and we, and, and I'd been, I went, I did a story on the graveyard, the mass graves in Saigon, and they dug the huge trenches, and it reminded me of Holocaust pictures, because they were just knock, throwing bodies in body after body, literally thousands, filling it. And there were a few people around looking for loved ones, but they're just throwing them in golf carts. I mean, anyway, that, that was going on. And uh, so the next day, the military command, uh, you know, called up and said, well, we've got a seat for AP on a plane to Bentray which was a capital. We're very proud there because they, they defended themselves well. It's a good example of how, what we'd like to see how this war was, is going. They were good people there. So I was happy to go back because I'd been in Bentray uh, a few weeks earlier and I'd met the advisory people and the, and the, the governor and looked around town. And I thought, well, this is good because I'll be able to talk to these guys and get a, a good story because I'd heard that the, the place had been invaded by the, the NVA or the VC. So I get on this plane and I, I, I with the others, so there was Bill Toohey of the LA Times and uh, Jack Foisy of the Washington Post, various people, and Michelle Renard, who had been a freelancer, and others. 
we get to Ben Trey, we get off, and there were jeeps waiting to take him in. And I see a Air Force major there that who'd been very friendly to me in my earlier visit. He'd shown me around town, and I had a drink with him, and he and he sort of beckoned me over. And he says, ah, you want to ride around, I'll, I'll take you. So I let all, I said, I can get away from the group. So we drove into town and he was telling me what really happened and about how the VC had taken the town and were in control. And you had the American advisory compound and the governor's compound together with the security forces. So the VC had the town and the market and the occupy all the civilian population. They just grabbed it instantly, very little fighting. And the governor and the Americans have got their place, a sort of cantonment there. And he said the decision was made by the 9th Division, U.S. Division that was going in the Delta area, U.S. Infantry Division, to, to go in with heavy, heavy stuff, bombing and artillery, and to drive the VC out. And he, and he said this was, he said it was terrible. There were at least 500 people dead that I know, but it was just, and he expressed real concern about it having happened. So when I went into town and I, my questioning was about basically, I'd already known from him what had happened. And he talked about flying over it and at one point as he was going, uh, as he was flying over the road out, there was a group of 150 people, he estimated. And he was told by a, uh, by a Vietnamese, the governor's office, you know, the VC are running down the road, you know, order of airstrike on him. And he said, no way in hell. So he, he would be refused to order an airstrike. He said there were civilians. He was going in this little plane and he was going and... But it was that nature. So when I went to talk to the people in town, they essentially confirmed all that they'd been telling me, and I had a lot of notes. And uh, so we get back on the plane, and I'm looking over my notes, and I'm looking at the other. Maybe there was a UPI guy. I'm looking at my colleagues, and, okay, they're all going to file a story. You know, they're all going to be aiming for the morning edition, edition the post and the uh, L.A. Times and whatever, you know. And I was looking at my notes, and then there was the quote, we had to destroy the town in order to save it, in the sense that, you know, it was there, it was occupied. You know, maybe the VC would have taken us out next, even though they would, there was plenty of support for them. So the decision was made to go to kill all the VC, but they're there with the whole population. So the, and I said, I've got to write a story on that. And I got back to the office and I sat down, blah, 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 and I, it was a sort of a feature story. I said, at what point in time do you decide to kill your own people in order to, you know, to restore security? It went on in the fourth paragraph I mentioned, uh, the, the, this American major said that we, we had to destroy the town in order to save it, meaning that we're saving, saving our position here. You know, we're, we, we've killed all the VC, we're saving sort of our honor in that sense. And I went on to talk about the destruction and I quoted this, uh, this Air Force Colonel Major Brown and a few others. And uh, out the story goes, boom, fantastic play particularly in Europe. And then the rockets come, what we call the, the callbacks from offices, and reporters started going down and to check it. And, of course, no one that I talked to, that no one there was going to say they admitted that they said it. But everyone there was saying we had, it happened. We had to bomb the hell out of the place. They couldn't deny it. The, you know, there was two-thirds damage. And one reporter I won't name... It was funny that uh, I was criticized for not naming the actual person, but that was not unusual in Vietnam. Any negative quote, if you put an officer's name on it, you could do it with GIs. You could, if, it's, if soldiers in a, in, a, in a foxhole and he's mad as hell with the war, 
You can quote him, and nothing's going to happen to him. What are they going to do, send him to Vietnam? You know, so you can do that, but with the officers, the senior people, it's perilous to challenge the, uh, the official version of events. That anyway, so I remember this one reporter uh, wrote, well, I don't know how much uh, truth is in, in one, uh, and this one officer told me, uh, uh, boom, 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 you know, I think it was just invented, and, uh, but he didn't want to be named. <laughs> that was a wonderful way to end the story, criticizing me for not naming the man, and then concluding it with a quote from a guy who didn't want me. But the, 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 it, that, that line, we had to destroy the town to save it, seemed to ring a bell with so many people. Was that what was happening in Vietnam, in a sense? Were we, were we, the bombing and the destruction of the, of the holy, this modern warfare, having cruisers off the coast shelling thousands of rounds into the jungle, and the madness of all that, that the, 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 the enormity of the American bombing and, and effort is this what was happening? And it was sort of picked up by everyone. And the AP went along with the whole thing. Now, there was a campaign by a group called Accuracy and, and Media to force me to give me the name, to give the name of the guy. But I promised this guy that I would, that I, no, I said, it's not going to happen. And ironically, I saw a few years ago that one of the people that was there basically took credit for having said the quote. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think it was him who said it, but he actually took credit for giving that quote. He has since died, but I thought that was sort of intriguing. But the, that it's, that's immaterial, the quote, and I still keep seeing it, destroying the town to save it. And I'm so glad that I got that quote. And it is said that that quote in Eddie Adams' picture turned the tide of war. There was a lot more turned the tide of war, but it did sharpen the American public's sense of what was going on, and that's what we were there for. And as far as I was concerned, this vast destruction of, our, of, uh, of the war effort was just, uh, just, just, just shocking, and that the pub, I wasn't going to do anything about it. I couldn't, but I wanted to tell, inform the American public about it, and if they wanted to go along with this kind of thing, that was how democracy works.